But again, we do have that enhanced risk for severe storms. So that is level three today, and we are talking about all modes of severe weather. The damaging winds over 60 miles per hour. A few tornadoes can't ruled out, and we are talking about not only large hail, but some very large hail across North Texas. So I do want to bring Marty Ellen in to talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, and before we get to that, Greg, I actually want to show you some video. This is out of West Texas just last night. Uh, so over the evening yesterday, West Texas saw its fair share of severe weather. This is near Sweetwater, Texas. And if you look closely enough, that is very large hail that's falling there. Visibility incredibly low. This is what ended up uh, being measured out there. This was golf ball to baseball sized hail in that area. That was along a dry line that actually formed. So that was yesterday. Today, Greg was mentioning that level three, that enhanced risk. The, the main hazard is going to be large hail, and this is specifically speaking to hail. Uh, we have our severe weather outlook here for the large hail risk. Uh, most of the, all of the Metroplex and portions of our Western counties have about a 30% probability or higher to see hail within 25 miles of a point. This means that there is a high likelihood that we'll see hail with these storms, but not everyone sees the hail. And if you were wondering why today, it's because of strong updrafts that will be possible. We have really high instability. We have that front coming in. That's going to help lift some of this air into our atmosphere. Raindrops form. It's going to rise into the storm, and when that happens, it goes so quick that it actually reaches a, an area that's going to be freezing. That's when ice particles start to develop. Those strong updrafts keep uh, that ice developing, and that's what forms the hail. Once it gets large enough, it falls to the ground. Once it gets heavy enough, it falls to the ground. The stronger the updrafts, by the way, the larger the hail. That's why uh, sometimes you'll hear some sirens. It just means go indoors, get more information, and move into a sturdy building, a sturdy structure. You want to avoid being outside. Uh, but if you have to be in the car, uh, Tashara does have some great tips uh, for you, uh, especially when it comes to heavy rainfall. But try to avoid roads, delay travel, move cars under the carport or in a garage if you can. That'll be a good idea for today. Now, speaking of our roadways, yes, we're seeing a lot of heavy rain, a lot of ponding out there, mm -hmm. and all well, the traffic is in traffic to Shara. How's it yeah, traffic out? is trafficking. Um, yeah, if we can use that as a way to describe what is going on this morning. Let's start off with this live look from our Mike, from Michael Forbes, our photographer, giving us a live look. I believe this is on 35. Early on, I know Forbes was headed toward that incident that we had in the former's branch area on that northbound side of 35E. Um, hearing that that one is involving a big rig and I believe another vehicle and a pickup truck. Uh, Y'all correct me on that one if I got any of the details incorrect, but that's the last that report, the last update, pardon me, that I got from Forbes. So again, folks, stop and go traffic 551 on the clock. Let's go ahead and come in studio so I can show you what's going on uh, here with some other issues that we're monitoring. One of those is on I-35 right at US 80. That problem as you get past University Drive on the northbound side. I want to focus on those incidents that are also involving big rigs, and you can see that one straddling that concrete guard rail there in the middle of 35. This is causing issues on the north and southbound side of the highway. I didn't have a live look at that problem that Forbes was headed to, but here's a live look at it now and you can see again another big rig involved in that one. Well, I don't know if you can see that, but I can see it. 35E right as you're getting uh, through the Farmers Branch area and this one is way out in Palo Pinto County. I know you can't see that. It's all good right at FM4 uh, East. So please be mindful of that one on the eastbound side of I-20 causing at least a 15 to 20 minute delay. As we make our way to Fort Worth, one incident just cleared near Camp Bowie, so that is some good news. 121, I don't have an icon as you're making your way eastbound on 121, just as you get past 35, but I'm hearing about some ponding. In fact, ponding across multiple roads across DFW. So, again, please be mindful of that. Keep your hands on the steering wheel and, of course, avoid any distractions this morning. That problem in Farmers Branch getting past uh, 635 Forest Lane, folks, that one has traffic backed up a couple of miles at least past Royal Lane at this point. As Mariel mentioned, as far as tips are concerned, when you you're uh, driving here this morning, slow down. That reduces your chances of hydroplaning. Use those low beam headlights. I've mentioned that to you before. And just be extra cautious today. This isn't the day to be trying to send those text messages and all that good stuff. You shouldn't be doing that anyway. Okay, folks, today the goal is to see and be seen as you get ready to head out this morning because you're likely going to run into something. Care over to you.